welcome back to our discussion with Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chastney. We're discussing the year in review 2019. Tourism. St. Lucia has had an unprecedented year of success in this highly competitive global industry. Uh, we experienced a 7% um, increase in um, uh, arrivals uh, over 2018. And our stay over arrivals um, for 2019, something like in the region of 400,000. So, again, unprecedented for us. So, we'll take a look now at some of the highlights in that sector, and we'll come on back to expound on some of those points. <music> Throughout 2019, St. Lucia's tourism industry experienced record highs in all areas, from arrival, stayover and cruise, to airlift, product development and investment. An unprecedented 1.3 million visitors came to the island shores, 400,000 were stayovers, representing a 7.1% increase over 2018, solidifying St. Lucia as one of the fastest growing tourist destinations in the Eastern Caribbean. Essential to the sector's growth is airlift. American Airlines in 2019 expanded services to St. Lucia, introducing a non-stop American Airlines flight from Chicago on December 21. Up until November 2019, American Airlines had provided 100,000 seats to destinations in St. Lucia, representing 43% of the seating capacity out of the United States. The cruise sector also recorded successes following the expansion of berthing facilities at Point Seraphine that enables the accommodation of Vista, Quantum and Freedom class vessels. On November 15, with a capacity of 1,800 passengers and over 750 crew, the MV Marella Explorer II made its inaugural call in Port Castries. The senior marketing manager at the St. Lucia Tourism Authority was among officials who welcomed the vessel. Efforts at improving the island's tourism product and heightening the visitor experience continued in 2019. You would have seen uh, the renovation of the market preparatory stage, which has already commenced. Um, you would have seen the relocation of the vendors. Uh, we would have trained about 200 vendors to be part of this new uh, initiative that we're doing to ensure that we can um, advance uh, greater economic penetration in the sector. Meantime, the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project is undertaking the pedestrianization of the William Peter Boulevard, a facade improvement program for existing small businesses and the upgrading of sidewalks. The St. Lucia Summer Festival sizzled as the 2019 Jazz Festival returned to form. A collaboration with the Lincoln Center of New York featured prolific jazz musicians from the home front, the region and international. On the hills of the St. Lucia Jazz Festival, St. Lucia Carnival came to life in July, attracting increased participation from St. Lucians and visitors. In fact, there was a 13% increase in tourist arrivals for the month over July 2018. Paradise. St. Lucia's demand in the tourism market was underpinned with the prestigious title of world's leading honeymoon destination for a record 11th time. The announcement was made on November 28th at the 26th annual gala ceremony of the World Travel Awards in Oman. The winning streak continued with the Minister for Tourism being named Caribbean Tourism Minister of the Year by the Caribbean Travel Awards. Honorable Dominic Fede was described as having stewarded a destination that is one of the hottest in the Caribbean and has become a haven for high-profile investment. Glittering Sands Beach Park, located at Toulouse on October 15, became the newest addition to the tourism product. Owned and operated by St. Lucians, the facility employs more than 20 persons from the constituency of Ancillary Canaries. The beach park welcomed the first group of over 50 cruise ship guests for a fantastic day in paradise. St. Lucia's talents were showcased at Carrie Festa 14, held in Trinidad and Tobago. 
The offering was a mix of theater, music, literary arts, performance poetry, traditional performances, visual arts, craft, and fashion. The performances included a showcase of Awa Lawa's festival and a theatrical performance of A Little Folk Tale, written by Monique Ogis and Jesse Myers and directed by artistic director Junior Frederick. The world is celebrated along the island as it commemorated 40 years of independence. His Royal Highness Prince Charles made an official visit to St. Lucia. A special ceremony was held in Viewfort in his honor. Above all, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me particular pride that St. Lucia today is such a vital member of our Commonwealth family, which binds together 2.4 billion of us across 53 countries on six continents through our shared experience and common values. And the physical embodiment of our talent and creativity now stands at the Castries waterfront. Master sculptor Jalim Yudovic produced a statue that captures the essence of being St. Lucian. This is your sculpture, St. Lucia. From Grosley to Barbino, from Castries to Denry, from Miku to Viewfort, from Larry to Chozel, from Sufra to Canaries, from Ancillary back to Castries. This sculpture is symbolic of how far we've come and where we want to go. A look there at some of the highlights of 2019 in this area of tourism and we did include culture in there because the two are certainly intermixed now for the government your aim is to increase gdp contributions to a staggering 1.9 billion dollars by 2022 the hope also is to attract investments of 3.5 billion also by 2022 and to create over 4,000 jobs in the tourism sector. Some people may say a bit ambitious. Um, look, we've developed a master plan for tourism, which includes a branding position as well as um, a strategic plan in how to diversify the tourism, the tourism product. Uh, we're not only looking at larger hotels and uh, higher end hotels, but also very excited about our village tourism um, program to be able to help mm -hmm. St. Lucians to be able to get more involved in the market. You know, the uh, um, Sandy Beach project, uh, Ansa Sab, uh, is probably one of my favorite projects ever. You know, it's funny because uh, when Sir John was alive um, and before anything had been built on the uh, causeway um, at Pigeon Island, the concept that we're using there is what we want, I, I wanted him mm -hmm. to use on Pigeon Island which basically would be to not allow development on the beach, um, but have like some kind of boardwalk that would separate the hotels from the beach and then create a village. And so subdivide it and allow smaller properties to be able to prosper and to create m something that's much more culturally relevant to what your destination is. People are looking for more authentic vacations. Clearly there are people who like to go to all inclusives and bigger all inclusives and there are people who like the uniqueness of a Jade Mountain or a Sugar Beach. But there are more and more people who want to go to intimate inns and go to places where they don't get to see what they get back home. And so it's how do you create an environment to nurture that culture of yours. And, and uh, Sandy Beach is exactly that. So the, a new road will be built along the fence of the airport um, going into the Viewfort town where Bank of Nova Scotia is. Uh, the land between the concrete road and going back to the, 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 the city of Viewfort will be subdivided. Um, water, sewage, electricity being put in, a building ordinance will be put in, special incentives. And so it means a solution now can buy 10,000 square feet of land. Uh, water, electricity, and sewage is already there. You don't have to borrow the money for all of that. Have special incentives. And then now there's a development around them. And that is much easier for them to be able to sell. With the cruise ship port coming into Viewfort uh, for home porting, pre and post stays. Means that people could now go and stay in Sandy Beach. The goal is to have in excess of a thousand rooms in that location. We also know that there's development of smaller properties around the island. So we're creating a new entity called Village 
Tourism Incorporated. Yeah, which, of course, Ansara and Grozny and Sufra are the lead uh, communities or the villages uh, th th right now. So. so, well, Village Tourism Incorporated and Village Tourism are, are part of a, of a same circle, but they're not exactly the same projects. So the projects in Ancelaray, Groselay, and Soufrere about building the physical infrastructure to support it. So if I want to have a small guest house now in Soufrere, downtown Soufrere, Soufrere, it's become more feasible. I can go to the Hummingbird Beach to go for the day to the beach. The square is there, and we're now redeveloping the waterfront, and it's now in a very attractive town. The goal is now to build up on the restaurants and create a water taxi service. So people from Anshastney, or from Sugar Beach now can take a water taxi and come into town and walk around town and go to these small restaurants in that particular area. It's to do the same thing in Anse Ray, right? I, I think it would be very difficult for a small guest house to survive in Anse mm -hmm. with the same with the current uh, standards that you would see there. Groselay has done a better job, but there's still improvements that have to be done in the Groselay town, i.e. the beach facilities, the drains, um, uh, clearing up in proper ordinances, building back up the older buildings so that the, it continues the character of, of, of the village. So physically, there will be village tourism, but the company we're creating is called Village Tourism Incorporated. So what happens is if I want to be able to get into the tourism business, let's say I worked at the hotel as a front desk manager, or I was a reservations manager, or a food and beverage manager, I want to open up a restaurant, I go in, I. I, I'm tested by the group in terms of what are my deficiencies are. And if you're opening up a small guest house, we will give you the accounting system. We will give you the booking system. Um, we will give you the marketing tools. We will provide the training for your line staff and for your middle management on a regular basis. We'll give you advice on your interior decorating. Um, we will now help you source your towels and your sheets and your soaps. And so it's starting to create a minimum standard. So there are Europeans and other people who want to come to St. Lucia for two or three weeks and stay at different properties. So th those properties have to be relatively same in terms of standard. I mean, Switzerland and Austria have been doing this for years. France, this is one of the oldest types of tourism and it's my favorite type of tourism um, ever is village tourism. That's why my family, when I had a choice of building a hotel, I built it in Rodney Bay, not on the beach. I built it off the beach because that's the confidence I have in that kind of product. But unfortunately, Rodney Bay is still not of standard to make village Pretty tourism come be to able life. to work. And this is what we want to be able to do. It, to be successful and sustainable, your local population must be involved, must be benefiting. Right? And then when you bring it to a scale, the likelihood of a smaller restaurant and a smaller restaurant buying food from the farmers and buying products from all the other suppliers is much greater than when you're a bigger hotel, you have economies of scale, and therefore you can bring it in from abroad much easier. So the goal is really to make sure that we have a balance in what we're doing from a tourism perspective and building up the rooms um, and making the economic impact we think is necessary. So part of the, part of the uh, plan for product development has to do with castries, the beautification mm. of castries, included in that is the rehabilitation of the Castries market. So that plan, uh, people are looking forward to a timeline because we've seen bumper to bumper uh, traffic now with the crews, the passengers um, coming in. So where are we at with timelines regarding that? So um, the redevelopment of the Castries market, the plan has already been completed and I really want to uh, congratulate Mr. Poyat. I mean, he is really a, a gem in this country in terms of, you know, he did the Derek Walcott um, home, he did the, um, the square in Sioux Frere, many buildings around St. Lucia, you know, it was his inspiration. Um, and, and really, he's a, for me, a cultural icon and a person I have a tremendous amount of respect for. So the plan has already been done. We've started with the place where the vendors go in the back. So a new roof, um, new resurfacing, they're now about to do the bathrooms, they're putting in now next to where the, the marketing board is to put in a container, a container park for s s selective smaller shops. Then we will start developing the interior of the building, including the old building itself. So the goal here is to create an atmosphere um, that small restaurants can thrive, that vendors now start becoming franchisees. 
So what I want to see is I want to see the vendors become franchisees to the, the uh, arts and craft segment here. So people who are producing pots, people who are producing baskets, um, these young people in terms of costumes and uh, natural soap products. So the idea is that they would help the vendor design their stall, help them design their uniform, teach them how to sell their product, and also provide them with a price spectrum. So now you're not going to see that every vendor is selling the exact same thing, uh, and that they're going to be able to add value. And so a tourist walking around is going to be able to smell, see, and hear, and taste St. Lucia. You know, uh, my vendors who are on um, Jeremy Street right now, nobody's got a blender and mixing fresh juices. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that we need to start seeing, and that's what's going to happen at the Castries market. And that you're going to have a variety of standards, so basic products all the way to arts and, and paintings in the area. Small restaurants, so a tourist going in can get the flavors of St. Lucia. Me, looking for a restaurant to eat in St. Lucia, I can go there, it's almost like being in a bazaar. Um, so when we went to Burroughs Market in London, this is what we're really sampling behind. And I have to tell you, ecstatic about what we're going to be doing there. Followed by the demolishing of the printery. Um, I'd like to think the parliament, but the parliament will probably be on hold for temporarily. And then the courthouse. But the ultimate goal is Constitution Park will be a park. So when I'm standing at the Castries Market and I look back, I'm going to see the cathedral, which now is going to connect us to the uh, um, Derek Walcott Square. Now, again, Which is also getting a facelift. Yes. How can you have a person and name a park after Derek and it looks the way it does? A cultural icon of this country, both in um, all forms of the arts. Where, 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 where do I see that in that place? And normally when you have iconic parks, you will see restaurants and activity around it. Where is it? A car park around it. So the goal is to really change that. Um, the customs building, sheds four and five, start clearing out the place so that now that those become pedestrian areas and you allow now the city to be able to breathe. Moving the container port now to cul-de-sac. Um, getting, we want to be able to put a convention center in, and now newer, older buildings in the location. CDCs, we're looking to demolish those buildings, but we want to make sure that we have a place to relocate people before we do that. That will become now the new government center. Um, so you'll have your high court, you have your prime minister's office, you have um, parliament, um, you have now certain government buildings that are going to be in that location. And so there's this character, and I want to be able to walk through Castries. We're talking about Banans. I love Banans. You know, nobody's talking about removing the people from Banans, but we're talking about improving the quality of the facilities, getting the dock going back again. And you talked about congestion. So why not have it from Point Seraphin? We have a little ferry that carries the passengers that want to go on tour to the south, take them to the Banans. All the buses are waiting for them there. Now you don't have all those buses going through what I call the gauntlet. Move the taxis that are currently by Place Carinage, still have them on the inside, but they go and collect their bus down by sheds four and five. So when they're leaving, they're leaving in front of this last building. So again, you're not congesting the town. So these are all obvious decisions, but for some reason, everybody's scared to pull the trigger on these things. And that's what I'm very excited about. We've spent the year redoing the plans because when I made the pronouncements, everybody said, oh, there was no consultation. But I think people forgot the fact that there was an intensive consultation in 2000 and 2000, 2007 and 2008. But guess what? Went back to the process, met with everybody again, and pretty much the same plans. But do you rather. think that not pulling the trigger really has to do with the cost that is attached to all what you have described there? It sounds all wonderful, it's great, but how do we pay for it? So we um, have cut a deal with the cruise industry um, to allow them to manage both our Castries port and our Viewfort port. That's the MOU that we signed with Royal Caribbean and Carnival. They're in fact bringing down with them uh, a company to, to review our plans. Um, finesse them in whatever way that they think is going to be possible. So we've borrowed um, 13 million US dollars to do the redevelopment of the Castries market, um, which is part of the loan agreement that we have with the Taiwanese government. 
Uh, we are um, uh, spending our own money to demolish the existing buildings and to put in the proper parks. Uh, and then when the cruise industry comes in, they're prepared to also bring cash to the, to the table. Um, so they've agreed to look at their tax structure and we've looked at our tax structure um, in terms of, of having a tax on that will help now pay for these, di these different developments that we're going to do. We're meeting with the EU um, and also CDB about the infrastructure that's required in castries, sewage. We know that water is leaking. Um, putting in better utilities, how we're going to deal with the surface waters, how we're going to expand some of the roads and create now the whole new traffic network. So again, by accessing development funds to be able to do that. So it's still going to cost us money, but at least it's on a more concessional basis. We believe the return comes in by bringing more business to town. 4.30, Castries is dead. Okay? We have a private sector investment that's going to go into Point Seraphine. We're going to build Marriott Courtyard. We're hoping to begin and break ground, break ground very soon. We've got a plan for redeveloping the shops. They're horrible. And, and the fact is, is that can't have a facility on prime land like that that's only there for the cruise industry. I want to see Point Seraphim being used seven days a week, all the time. By so locals and visitors by everybody. alike. You know, as well as the tourism industry is doing and the plans that you've just um, outlined there uh, sound really good and then asked about how are we paying for it. You spoke about looking at the tax regime and so forth. The hotel accommodation tax or fee, if you want to use, if that's a more dumbed down word, uh, it has been announced that it's been introduced and it's not something off the cuff. We've heard about it being in the, in the pipeline for a while now. But there is that public concern that really and truly you're sort of overburdening the one sector that is keeping St. Lucia afloat. So sadly, I could have rewritten the article. St. Lucia is the first country in the Caribbean to reduce the VAT rate on tourism. But then you're saying that you taken away, but you also right. undercutting. So, so, so the point, that's what I'm saying, to, that's why I said to you I could rewrite the story and say to you that St. Lucia is reducing the VAT rate on tourism from 10% to 7%. And then applying a fee. Correct. So it's, a, it's what we call a revenue neutral tax. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of doing what we're doing is in order to allow the monies to be collected directly off of the, of the, the, the uh, tourist and it's a user fee of St. Lucia, right? So they're paying, if they're staying at a smaller property, $3 per person per night. If they're staying at a larger property, $6 per person per night, okay? That money is going directly into the tourism authority. So that means that the tourism authority is no longer dependent on the tourism budget. So the 35 or $40 million a year that we're putting into the tourism authority, that stops. By being now a separate entity like SLASPA, because that's how SLASPA makes its money, off of taxes and revenues that it's generating at the port, both at the airport and at the seaport, it means it has its own budget, has its own board, because there's too many restrictions to it when it's operating within the government context. I mean, you remember me when I was director of tourism, Absolutely. when I was minister of tourism, constantly complaining um, that the cash flow of money all of a sudden when you're doing well is when government cuts back on the revenue and that you fight in cabinet every day because people see this as money that could go to healthcare or education or infrastructure, which all need. But the fact is, is that investing in, mar doing marketing is an investment. A brand is a value. So the better known your brand is, the better it helps bananas, the better it helps our rums, better it helps you when you travel and that people know where St. Lucia is. Okay, there is a, that's an asset value to the state that we continue to be able to invest in. And that's why we say the solutions. You know, when we're committing crime or we do things against the tourists, what we're doing is we're undermining our own brand. Because those are the stories that are going to be remembered out there. So I don't want people to think that they should do it for tourism. Do it for yourself. Do it for the brand St. Lucia. Let's be known as one of the best places to live, the best places to invest. That's the story that we want outside there. So the changes that we've made are to facilitate um, making that happen. 
And so therefore, there will be no increase in the cost of coming to St. Lucia, but structurally now, we've made it much more efficient in order for the monies to go into the tourism authority and for the tourism authority now to be able to spend the money. The deal that I did with the, cruise, with the hoteliers is very simple. There were deficiencies in the old St. Lucia Tourist Board. Too much money was being spent on overheads. Too much money was being spent on events, okay? which they were understanding what the value to the branding was. So, so we've we, restructured that. We've taken events out. We've put some restrictions in how much money can be spent on an administrative basis and to make sure that there is greater efficiency and more accountability in building our brand. But now, people are concerned that what's happening to the tourism industry is that now St. Lucia becomes a more expensive destination. But I just said that's not the case. So if you reduce the VAT rate, but you put it back on as a form of a head tax, you're revenue neutral. So that's what I was saying is that the cost of coming to St. Lucia hasn't been has changed. Has not been affected Would not be all. affected at all. Pending projects mm -hmm. in the tourism industry. You did speak about the Sandy Beach uh, project. Uh, during the budget, you did indicate that we would be having um, no more, less than five or so projects. So where we at with that? Are we still so, uh, on stream? Cabot, which is a new golf course, hotel, and real estate project is broken ground. So they're doing 90 rooms in an 18-hole golf course and 300 real estate lots. Um, I'm extremely saddened over the Sandals project, to be honest with you. you know, that's a project that um, should have started and actually would have been coming to completion right now. It would have added almost 400 new suites to St. Lucia on a piece of land that is only earmarked for tourism development. It's the piece of land that lies between Sandals Grand and the landings. Um, sadly, the landings um, decided to challenge um, mm -hmm. the DCA in their decision. They lost the, the first case um, and they've decided um, to appeal. Uh, and the developer basically is holding off because he feels it's too large of an investment to take that risk. Um, it was a very difficult position for me because I really want to let all my investors in my country know that this is a good place to invest and we follow the rule of law. So that would have, that's a significant delay um, and we would have already been feeling the economic benefit and the momentum from that happening. But I'm still hoping that that project is going to happen. Is that the only stalled project? Um, because you did mention that the Hilton yep, so would have been what, doing that shock. So, so what happened, well not Hilton, we had Hilton going in at Rex mm -hmm. and we were, plans were completed, everything Hyatt. ready to go. Uh, Hilton first, which was at Rex. Um, and we were very advanced, and then the Rex people decided to do a partnership with Sunwing, with the same mm -hmm. people who were doing the Royalton, not only on the San Lucia project, but on all of their developments around the, island, uh, the country. So Grenada, Tobago, and Antigua in particular. So it means they had to go back to the drawing board. Um, my understanding is they're pretty far advanced in their concepts. They're looking at, uh, I think it's a Planet Hollywood, to go where the building was demolished, because they had gone as far as to demolish the building. Uh, they're rebranding the old Royal St. Lucian into Mystique, or Mystique, I think, Mystique. Um, and then they're also going to be developing a new branded property where Papillon is. Uh, so that is supposed to be starting later this year. We then have the Hyatt project, which is going to go in shock. So there's an 800-room property, uh, 400 rooms all-inclusive, 400 rooms EP, with also major conference facilities. Um, you have the Marriott Courtyard that's coming here at Point Seraphim. Uh, you have the uh, Sabasha project, which now is going to be a Park Hyatt. So originally that was going to be a Fairmont, and there was new owners that came in um, and have taken over that property. So we're hoping that that's going to get started very soon. The uh, people at DSH are developing um, their first hotel, which will be right next to the site. What's exciting is that hotel is also going to be a university um, with Lausanne University, which is phenomenal. I mean, you're talking about the best um, uh, hospitality university in the world. And St. Lucians will be given access to that university on a very affordable um, basis. But once you become a graduate of Lausanne, you can get a job yeah, to anywhere, anywhere in, the in, the, world. in the world. We have like 30 seconds left. You have Canals, which is yes, the Honeymoon which is Beach. This which weekend? Is, this Come weekend, uh, January 15th, we're breaking ground. Uh, so 
Look, very exciting times, uh, and there are other things, but I want to wait until they're more advanced before we announce them. Right. We've now concluded our second hour with Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney, as we look back at some of the events of 2019.